Well, hello there, guys. We're gonna be playing some We the Revolution today. Um, let's jump right in. We're gonna create a profile, and I'm just gonna call it Danton. Why not? Danton is my favorite revolutionary. So we're gonna push forward here. Let me just uh, toggle a quick options thing. Bring this down to like 70. I don't know if we're gonna have issues with music, so for now we're gonna get that pretty far down. And let's get started. So my goal here is to go for as long as possible. Never actually gotten to the very end of this game. Uh, so that should tell you something. But let's watch the intro. It's a pretty great one. In fact, Father. most of the animations in this game are really great. I am here. Do you hear me? Hello, my friends. Good to see you. you the best I could. Why did you disown me? I have your blood in my veins. How could you? Why did you grieve for him? He was nothing. I am better than he was. People will follow in my footsteps. Father. Hey, how you doing, Nathan? Don't forget to hit that like button, folks. Really helps. All right, guys. So, Raymond Devoyer. This is, of course, my family. So, we've got my oldest son, my youngest son, my wife, and my... I think it's my father-in-law. My Yeah, my father-in-law. Um, so, we want to go ahead and get started with the first case. Hopefully, we come out on top here. Now, here, it's pretty much just an introduction tutorial. I'm going to get through it for you guys. Uh, because, essentially, I'm judging my son as to whether he... Um, fought back with justification um, against a bully. So for now, I'm just going to jump through this pretty much. Um, if you guys want me to explain everything uh, in detail, I certainly can, but I get the feeling most of you guys have already probably seen the game. Right now, the only people we have to, pl to please are the revolutionaries and the common folk. Um, they have quite similar um, beliefs, but they also have differing beliefs, different opinions, etc. So right now, I'm pretty much just going to try to catch my son in a trap. Um, we'll go ahead, the course of events, fighting children would be the course of events, uh, child's play would be the course of events, although I would have called it extenuating circumstances, possibility of repeating, the victim, no, so I'm actually I'm caught in a trap, the chip, to chip tooth is course of events, and injured Antoine is the victim, my son beat another kid up, so we're just going to pretty much jump through these questions, um, again, to to pretty much try and get to the next part here. Um, oh, we can actually make our decision. Your addictions are no longer a secret. The fact that other children are bullying your son because of them is a minor problem. But who's spreading these rumors? It's likely one of the parents. They could have whispered into the children's ears. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to say let's talk eye to eye. We don't want to be seen as a bad influence amongst the parents, of course. So let's go ahead. I think we've unlocked all of the questions, essentially. Hey, how you doing, James Watson? Who started the fight? 
could tell you who ended it, says the grandfather. All right. What exactly were they saying? And again, in all the other cases, we'll actually discuss this with them, but I just want to jump through this first one. All right. How does your play turn into a fight? Okay, now, of course, I need to deliver a verdict. Um, he's going to be not guilty. But, of course, since this is just sort of a tutorial, it's not going to actually affect us uh, at all. Good job, son. You kicked a bully's ass. That's always a good thing. We appreciate it. All right. Um, of course, the wife is, is saying things, but right now we have more important things, my friends. We have to judge the people of France. Let's see what's our first case. Oh, another cutscene. And this is the one game where I don't mind the cutscenes. Liberté! We were enchanted by the idea of freedom. We could not resist it. Whole families took to the streets. <laughs> France was never so happy. We were enchanted by the idea of freedom. Right, Act 1, Liberté. I hope we get a fairly simple case for Day 1, but frankly, no matter what you do in this game, one or the other factions is going to be pretty much kind of pissed at you. Alright, here we go. The expected sentence is actually freedom. Um, so let's take a look at the case file. Like to report that Citizen Corby does not pay the city for his stall. He openly criticizes the new rule when talking to his clients. Alright, um, well, we should probably take a look at more information here. One of the local merchants, Guy Deneau, went to the National Guard station near the halls with a raised voice. He stated that the owner of a neighboring stall had purposely poured wood tar into his barrel of herrings. For this supposed crime, Deneau demanded a proper punishment. Soldiers went to the halls and established that the herrings did indeed taste awful. Since there was no evidence of the crime, they did not take any action. A few hours later, the guards returned to the halls. This time it was the formerly accused Jean Corby who called for them, and there was a plethora of evidence on the site, the clearest being Dinal himself smashing his neighbor's stall with a long pole in front of witnesses. All right. Um, your name? Dino. So this is Dino. Um, we've already found out, essentially, uh, what he's accused of. So we want to go ahead and start questioning him. Let's take a look here. We know for sure he had a wooden pole. That's the instrument of the crime. Uh, let's take a look here. He has been spreading counter-revolutionary propaganda. That's unacceptable. An old denunciation. Counter-revolution, once again. Stall next to the entrance is going to be the crime scene. We've unlocked all the questions here. So, what products does Citizen Corby sell? Fruit and vegetables. And you sell fish. Straight from your port and petite dalle. I see. Then why did one of you come to the halls with a wood tar and the other with a wooden pole? Citizen, I don't remember. That stick must have been lying near the stall. Corby, however, clearly planned his actions. I don't know. Um, we found your denunciation of Citizen Corby. So that's another thing to keep in mind. This guy's a revolutionary. Um, well, he, he may or, he's, he is a revolutionary. That denunciation may or not be true. Uh, he could just be using, you know, his revolutionary status to sort of bolster his claim. He's trying to avoid royal taxes. You only started after the beginning of the revolution. All right, be quiet, both of you. Citizen Corby, come closer. So we're bringing the other uh, merchant, the one whose stall was bashed up. Do you really dispute the new order? It's slander made up by a man who trades old flounders. Is that a no? Of course it is. I'm a merchant, not a politician. Why did you have wood tar with you that day? I sell fruit, but my suppliers sometimes buy wood tar because it repels pests. And why did you pour it into Citizen Dinal's barrel? I did nothing of the sort. He probably poured it in himself so as to denounce me again. Oh, that is strange. It's kind of a strange accusation. But we're going to let the jury decide on this one. It would appear your conflict has continued for some time now. It all started when that scoundrel placed his stall where mine should be next to the entrance. It wasn't your place. You took it after old Shuket. Silence, and have you not been able to reach an agreement ever since? 
Now that I think of it, it may have started even earlier. Jean once refused to pay a red mullet taken by his wife. All right, guys. I think this guy's definitely going to be going to jail. But by putting him in jail, we're going to upset the revolutionaries a bit. Again, because he is, you know, unfortunately a revolutionary. Um, we're going to go ahead and give the verdict. And in this case, the verdict will be prison. And as you can see, that's going down some. If we did an acquittal, this is what would happen. But I'm going to go with prison for this one. Sorry, revolutionaries. We're trying to be fair here. And... Let's go ahead and end that. All right, seems that Parisians will have to start buying elsewhere, Citizen Dino. I sentence you to prison for vandalism. All right, guys, there we go. I mean, it is what it is. You know, sometimes you pick the right uh, verdict, sometimes you don't. Uh, I think in this case, we did pick the right verdict, getting plus six with the common folk. May I remind you that you promised to join me? I have a feeling that tonight's moon favors gamblers. Okay, though it does not favor spouses. So he's actually telling me to go out and drink with him tonight instead of spending time with my ham with uh, my family really, <laughs> um, with my family. Um, I'm gonna keep my promise. The thing is, we need to build these political connections, um, and hopefully, yeah, you know what? Let's be an honest judge. When I say an honest judge, just let's try to seem honest in the public eye. We're gonna go home to our family. <laughs> now this might hurt our political collect, uh, connections later and that's definitely not good hey how you doing David good to see you man so clearly my family is happy that I chose them which I think is good Again, this game is not very black and white at all. It's very, uh, very gray. If I'm going too fast, just tell me, guys. Okay, so now we essentially can decide um, who we want to, you know, sort of spend time with. We do need to kind of bring up um, our influence with the revolutionaries. So I was thinking maybe go to a demonstration. Yeah, let's do that. Pro-revolution demonstration up close. Of course, it's not going to be ha It's not going to be very. Uh, the wife's not going to be very happy, but my son should enjoy it. And I think overall that worked out pretty well. Day two it is. So far I haven't had to sentence anybody to death, so I don't feel too bad. Today the people of Paris commemorate Jacques Guillem Simonot, mayor of Attempes. He was lynched by a furious mob for performing his duties to France. Okay. And this is, of course, um, King Louis who, that's writing this. But um, Simonot was a good, loyal officer. Yes. All right, I wonder why the king has taken the trouble to show up. Louis is marching arm in arm with the people of Paris. That is unexpected. This, of course, is after the revolution. The king wasn't immediately sentenced to death, for those of you that don't know. You know, initially he became a citizen, um, and then, you know, after many months, they did eventually sentence him to death. So right now he's just citizen Louis Capet. He's no longer really the king or king in name only. All right, here we go. What's going on with this fellow? First of all, neighborhood gossip. The exchange of pleasantries did not take long. Most people stop being brave the moment they face danger. This time, the dangers could be described as the judge of the Revolutionary Tribunal and a one-meter-long bludgeon in the hand of a guard. Ooh, okay. So that's actually uh, increased our reputation a bit. We're known as uh, a bit of a tough uh, judge. The defendant is Olivier Mugler, a 65-year-old master locksmith who is famed among Parisian burglars as an expert on unopenable locks. Last month, he was commissioned by the owners of a Parisian glassworks, jean Rue Le Roy, and Ferdinand Salant to construct locks for ornate chests for valuables, presumably as gifts for their wives. The craftsman praised his latest creations as thief-proof, 
Shortly following their completion, the industrialist houses were hit by a series of burglaries committed by a recent newcomer to Paris, Hector Vian. The thief from Orléans was caught in the act and shot by Ferdinand Salon. Wow. An expensive Turgon map of Paris with the houses of recently robbed industrialists marked on it was found on the deceased. Surprisingly, Salon had given Mugler an identical map as advance payment. This deposit was in addition to the agreed remuneration from all the employers. I see. All right. So... Robbing the bourgeoisie is no crime, says, yells somebody from the, the uh, jury. According to the case file, you are citizen Olivier Mugler. It is, indeed it is, Monsieur le Judge. May I have a request? I would like to sit down. I'm an old man, you see. That's a little shady already that he's saying that. Basic respect for the judiciary requires that you remain standing. Do the names Salan, Rodé, and Raw mean anything to you? All right. You mean locksmithing? Let's get to the questions, old man. So here we go. He's a master locksmith. That's the offender's personality. <clears throat> um, lock construction would be, I would say, extenuating circumstances, right? Oh, oh, come on. I mean, he is... Let's try again. Maybe evidence? Is it evidence that he knows how to construct locks? No, see, I don't think so. Uh, the map of Paris is evidence. This was in his possession. A drunken evening would be the course of events come back to the law construction marks on the map would be evidence certainly famous thief would be as if the offender's personality um but that could also be an accusation oh i don't like that i don't like that one bit all right so a series of burglaries these would be the course of events and again with the master locksmith it looks like we can ask again Extenuating circumstances, beautiful. Course of events on lock construction, not bad. And famous thief, course of events. We've unlocked every single one of the questions. You were commissioned by the victims to make chest locks. It was me naturally, and all in agreement with the contract. My job was to prepare and install the locks, and the employer was only to come and see whether the work was completed and to pay, of course. Was the installation carried out at your workshop? No on site, at the client's property. None of these idlers bothered to deliver the trunks to my workshop, so I had to strain my old legs. Does that mean you knew the addresses of the victims? How else would I get there, blindfolded and on a wagon? Okay. Did you know Hector Vian before? This is the first time I've heard the name. That's interesting, as you were seen draining several bottles of wine together at the Ginger Margot Inn. We've caught him in a lie for sure on that one. There's no doubt about it. Um, yeah, it's kind of a crime because you said that you didn't, and you can't really lie to a judge. Um, no, I had a drink that with a person that introduced themselves as Hector. Um, I didn't plan any heist with a Hector, Virgo, or Hugo. I'm a locksmith, and I earn good money from it. Burglars are for, for vagrants without a job. Okay, but he did. He was definitely drinking with the with Hector. So that's. Let's just get straight to it. Did you give Hector Vian the map? I gave nothing to Achilles, Hector, or any other Greek. Call in the witness, citizen Jean Rood. Okay, you will not speak unless called upon. What went missing during the burglary? My house was the first one to be robbed, and in my case it was mostly valuables. At Rawls' house, he will not say it himself, and I do want, not want him to go to prison. It was the letters he had exchanged over the years with King Louis. Ooh, damn monarchist. See, now we almost have to let this guy go, because in, even if he did rob a monarchist, you know, that's kind of okay right now. Salon did not lose a thing. He shot the vermin in the act. That is what he said. What happened to the items he'd stolen? That still remains unknown. According to Salon, Hector had nothing with him. Ferdinand suspects he had hidden the other valuables elsewhere. He hid the other items before robbing the last house? Strange. Okay, I'm gonna say, uh, you look upset. What are you afraid of? The crowd behind me, and you know... I do not want to go to prison. And Salon said that if I were to talk nonsense in court, that I would be sentenced to a few years. Is that true? Okay, Citizen Ferdinand Salon instructed you on what to testify... No, well, he might have offered some suggestions on how not to get into trouble by speaking gibberish. I'm a rather nervous person and sometimes struggle to make sense. That's not good at all. Okay. Uh, fool more than a witness. That's our bourgeoisie. Do you recognize the map? No, I don't recall ever seeing it before. Ferdinand Salon claims that she gave you this map as an advance payment for your services. He claims what? That wicked wretch of a second-rate merchant. He gave me a scrap of paper as payment for making three locks and says it's supposed to be worth more than 3,000 francs he owes me. An honest laborer is being judged while frauds remain at large. All right, so he's saying the map doesn't belong to him, um, but I don't know. Now he's claiming he lost a map. It's, it's a little strange, honestly. 
Were you the one that marked the addresses of the three victims on the map? I didn't mark anything. The houses of your clients are marked on the map. I didn't. I don't know who marked them. Maybe you should ask the person you found the map on. I mean, fair enough. We did not actually, you know, find them on him. Maybe the court has the marks. It made the marks and has no memory of doing so. Ooh, that's a nasty response from the king. Do you not think there are too many coincidences in your story? You obtain the map, you lose it. It is found on the thief who has robbed your clients. I know nothing of coincidences. I only make locks. Yeah, uh, the jury didn't buy that answer at all. <laughs> They're just like, nope, send him to jail. Now, the thing is, if we send him to jail, we're further further going, going to upset the revolutionaries. And right now, we're actually doing quite well with the people. So what I can do here, instead of asking every single question available, is I can try to actually ask questions that'll favor him going free. And I have to say, even though I don't think this guy is innocent at all, uh, I really, really think that I'm going to go ahead and probably, yeah, let him go. Thank you, Agrippa, for not doing an Australian wildlife thing. <laughs> Vaccine gamer. <laughs> oh, are you not a fan? <laughs> are you not a fan of our uh, survival series? Uh, yeah, in, in that case, uh, you're going to be happy because I actually plan to do Long Dark, but then I was like, no, you know what? Um, I actually want to play some uh, We the Revolution. So let's see if we can sort of bring away Gil from him. 3,000 francs. See, that's a lot of money. So why would he need to steal? You know? I think we can let him go. And still stay pretty uh, neutral in the eyes of the jury. So there we go. I'm just going to simply acquit him. Uh, oh boy. No. We need to find a way to sentence him to prison. I was wrong. All right. Well, in this case, uh, rumor has it that you're one of the best locksmiths in Paris. Did you tell Hector how to open? I'm going to have to go against the jury here. We we have to. We have to. So it's going to be prison for this fellow here so that we get some respect with the revolutionaries. And I guess we're not going to be an honest judge. We're going to be a bit corrupt. Outrageous! How can you do that to an innocent man? We have the clues, strong evidence, and a con con convenient verdict for the judge at least, but you're completely certain of this guilt? No, it doesn't matter what you have to say. Now, of course, that's going to lose some respect uh, amongst jurors, but at least it's going to save our skin. Enemy at the courthouse. Not good. So we've got to try to bring that back up and, and trust the jury here in future cases. Look, an authentic map by Turgot. It would be a pity if it rotted in a safe deposit box. These are court deposits. Well, Mathilde did tell me long ago to take care of my study at home. All right. I know someone who can remove these marks without damaging the map. Interesting. King Louis the Sixteenth. There were people who truly loved him. He reminded the French they had noble ancestors. Do not be manipulated by people who are not bearing the burden of responsibility. This saddened me. Someone had advised him to say that. Someone who was well aware of the cold, inevitable wind of change. I did not pity the king, but those who will come after him, as they will not have great ancestors. All right, one of us. Frenchmen march in the streets of Paris side by side, one line after the other, to commemorate Jacques Goulême Simoneau, mayor of Etamp. All right, and once again, this has lost us some respect with the common folk for attending uh, this demonstration. There's our friend. Your son is rather good with the viola. He's both talented and enthusiastic. I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of skip through this. I'm not as interested in the uh, back and forth between the family as I am with the, uh, the actual court cases themselves. After various important events, you may find yourself with an action forced upon you. So in this case, Simonol is the action that's forced upon us. Hanging out with our friend, I believe. Uh, and attending, of course, the parade in memory of the lynched official. And the wife is really tough on us in this game. That is our new symbol of freedom. You can still smell the fresh wood. 
Do you feel free looking at it? Individuals like us do not need symbols, but France does. Did you hear the news of the day? People are running around like headless chickens, and yelling about Louis and his entourage escaping Paris. So, we will not be enjoying the aroma of fresh wood for long. Monuments like that are not installed solely for the purpose of punishing thieves or lesser aristocrats. Do you think it wants to taste royal blood? Louis's flight was a stupid move, yet it seems it was planned. One of us. This is what James has been waiting for. That is, if they catch him. Is that why Louis visited us at the court? To manipulate us? Maybe deep in his heart he felt what the builders of the guillotine did. That someone has to be exposed as a traitor. Even if there is none. Ah, uh, yes. Welcome, Citizen Fidel. My name is Antoine Quentin. So this guy is essentially the prosecutor. He acts as a prosecutor for the state in this case. The king is gone. Treason. Anyone with information about his whereabouts should immediately disclose it to the authorities. Okay, so the king is uh, has tried to escape, of course. Let's take a look here. In the dock is Luc Blanchot, a resident of the section de Gravelier, Rue Meselier. Citizen Blanchot owns several grocery stalls. We've received multiple complaints regarding his unfair trading practices, such as selling spoiled fruit, price speculation, and the violation of legal price limits. Mr. Blanchot has denied all accusations, but my investigation at his stalls has revealed at least some of the complaints to be justified. He claimed that the prices were inflated due to employee mistakes and that spoiled produce was about to be disposed of on the day of inspection. It must be noted that when the inspectors pointed out his transgressions, Blanchot scolded his employees and readily set about restoring order to his stall. And Luc Blanchot, okay. He's got connections with Marat and Robespierre, or so he claims. Okay, so if he's got connections with Marat and Robespierre, we do not want to find him guilty. Uh, let's see. Poisoning customers is the accusation. Rotten apples is the evidence. We do have... I thought we had evidence of that. Okay. Well, I could have sworn we did. I guess we we're caught in a lie there. Uh, the defendant's connections. Hmm. Huh. Defender's personality. You know. Employee mistake. Extenuating circumstances. Legal price limits. It's an accusation. I guess not. And customer complaints is... Should have been an accusation. We get one more chance at this one. Legal price limits would be counter-revolutionary. There we go. And customer complaints would be the accusation. All right, guys. Here we go. So I think we need to try and increase our respect with the common folk. Let's take a look here. Yeah, the common folk, our respect is quite low with them. So quite frankly, what we should try to do is... <laughs> kill him um, uh, is apparently what the common folk want let's just make sure that that's correct yeah the common folk would be really happy with that so let's get out of here and uh, let's try and get him convicted of the death penalty it is weird that he is claiming to be revolutionary though that's going to probably really upset the revolutionaries uh, if we kill him oh, didn't we ask all the questions yeah, i think we did i brought carrots from his stall luc blanchot all right he's a Stale vegetables never killed anyone. I am an honest entrepreneur, and my business will not be harmed by such allegations. Make them get married and have kids, you said. Yeah, no, I, I, I can imagine that's pretty uh, tough. All right. I'm going to say it seems your employees are rather prone to making mistakes. I would do everything myself if I could, but that is impossible. There was no one in Paris competent enough. Do you think so little of your fellow citizens? Well, most people are dolts. The very fact that I must defend myself in the court attests to that. Did the defendant offer adequate instruction to his subordinates? I own a chain of grocery stalls, not a parish school for the dim-witted. He's insulting us. He's insulting the common people. All right, let's see. Did you, did, do you admit to selling spoiled produce? That has already been established by the inspectors. There's no need to go over the matter again. Answer the question. Yes and no, because I admit that such things have been reported at my stalls. No, because it was not my fault. Whose fault was it then? I cannot be held accountable for the nature of not creating all apples equal. Apples are not citizens of France. See, he's the owner of the business, as far as I'm concerned. He made the mistake. It's his fault. 
yeah this guy is no good we can already put him in jail and the good thing about going in jail is actually we wouldn't really gain any respect amongst either faction but we wouldn't really upset one either um as far as i know so i'm thinking jail might be the best thing but i know james really wants a guillotine right now uh let's see with regard to the violation of the legal price limits before monsieur le judge asked let me make one thing clear Legal price limits were never deliberately broken at my stalls. I find such accusations to be malicious and vile. Objection! You only corrected the price upon the arrival of the inspectors. He deserves to rot in prison. See, people um, are not so happy about this guy. We've analyzed your ledgers and discovered that you have been violating legal price limits on a regular basis. Those ledgers are kept by ordinary people who are prone to making mistakes. I will analyze them again and make proper amends. No, 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 no. We're definitely, definitely caught you in a lie. Um... All right, these are mere accounting errors, a zero or a decimal point put in the wrong place. It can all be explained, after all. Are we not all citizens of France here? Citizen Robespierre has assured me that we are. Oh, boy. So he's really trying to push that connection to Robespierre. Robespierre isn't a lackey of costermongers like him. Silence, or I will adjourn the proceedings. Have they bribed the, bribed the judge as well? Okay, I think at this point, we have enough to lock him up. If we go any farther, we might actually end up finding him... Um, uh, pretty uh, innocent so we need to be careful and I think it's best to just put him in prison that's going to slightly increase the respect of the people and slightly decrease um, the respect of the revolutionaries but the jury will also agree with us so I think this is the way to go pretty straightforward case the guy's guilty of selling rotten vegetables yeah it's his fault I think this one was actually pretty fair so now we have to sign with the prosecutor Did the defendant confess to his crime? No. Was his act, was her act, I thought it was a he, but what do I know? Uh, was her act counter-revolutionary in nature? Yes. Uh, was the defendant's attitude towards the fines issued? Did he bribe an official? Let's say he did. How does the defendant explain his disregard for legal price limits? Written mistake. Let's hope this is acceptable. What are we not doing here? There we go. I send in citizen Luc Blanchot to prison. Lead the condemned out. Okay, let's see how they stay fresh behind bars. Not bad. So we actually got a little bit of respect, reputation, and influence increase. I think we did the right thing. And clearly he's not a friend of Robespierre or we would have lost some influence. So not bad. And again, we did lose a little respect for the revolutionaries. Due to the establishment of a revolutionary tribunal, we need to prepare an official stamp. I was told by you, citizen, because de Boyer is indisposed. All right, so we get to make our stamp now. And again, I said I wanted to be, like, as honest of a judge as possible. And that's not saying much. So for the emblem, this is really way too creepy, too cultish. The fascies is creepy. But this one, I think, is pretty straightforward. Yeah, let's just do this. Scales of justice. I'll take it. Again, nothing too fancy. Welcome, folks. Make sure to hit that like button. I've got 11 viewers here watching the revolution. All right, so um, we have lost a lot of respect with our wife. It would be nice to get that up, but it would also be nice to get our respect with the revolutionaries up through uh, Bernard. Let's read together. Kind of a boring activity for a family to do together, I think. But, uh, you know, before TV or before the iPhone, that probably wasn't so bad. So there we go. We'll read together. We lost a little respect with my oldest son. I guess he's not a fan of reading. Fair enough. Day Gato. Have we caught the king yet? That's my real question. Nope. Oh, wait a minute. Tragically, we are losing control of the streets. People feel betrayed by the king, and some believe him to be a spy trying to elude justice. Special means are recommended when suppressing unrest. We only need an opinion from the judges to make sure we are working legally. In other words, you need their blessing to shoot at protesters. People can't control their emotions and are, hurling others, are hurting other citizens as a result. Look at the windows. Next time, they might do something worse than throw rocks. We have to, uh, we have to control the mob, unfortunately. I approve the National Guard's use of force against ruffians running, ruining the capital. And I know for sure they're going to end up killing some innocent, innocent people because of this. But we have no choice. Again, we have to keep the mob in control. So I am going to accept this. 
The problem is, since, uh, well, spoiler alert, um, I kind of already know what's going to happen. And this guy's going to be brought before me again, and I'm going to have to answer for, well, essentially giving him the order to shoot. So maybe it's best to reject it and let him get killed by the mob. Um, I don't know. have to make some sacrifices here to make it through this game, but I am going to accept that for now. We're going to pretend we've never played this game, and we're going to do what, what I think I would probably do. Let's get our stamp. The Scales of Justice. Yeah, James says it was in the 1950s, and may have been. Yeah, I think it was in France was the last uh, the last country to use the guillotine, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, in the 19, 1955, 1956, something like that. The mob wanted to act as both judge and jury again and hang people from the street lamps. Poor Rochard was almost hanged. Okay, so the beloved tutor of your Frederick. So this is a tutor of my son, um, and his tu you know, who's nearly killed. What are you doing? The trial is about to begin. It's about Monsieur Bouchard. News travels fast. He's been accused of counter-revolutionary activities. You know him. It can't be true. It's not so simple. Leave before somebody hears us. And this is, of course, a teacher, but maybe he is guilty. I guess we haven't caught the king yet. We've just caught Citizen Bouchard. Remember to stay strong in your faith and complete your duties with dignity. Tell me how our brothers in faith are doing. Yeah, this is a letter. May God praise you, Jean Anson. So that's a letter from the uh, Archbishop Jean Anson. We've got the evidence. He is a parish priest. I'll let you guys read the case file. A vicar and a tutor. He's a son of a, comb uh, a cobbler. He believes in Enlightenment ideals. After refusing to adjure the civil constitution of the clergy, he was removed from his parish, prohibited from carrying out his duties, and sentenced to banishment. Despite this, he stayed in Paris and continued to work as tutor, uh, where he started before 1789. He was captured in the streets by fortuitous circumstance. A guard officer present during this, his trial a few months ago recognized him and didn't hesitate to act. Following an investigation, Pochard was accused of spying and spreading counter-revolutionary propaganda in order to prepare a foreign intervention that would end the revolution. Wow. Yeah, we absolutely need to look into this. Now, it may or may not be true. We also found church riches in his possession. That's more evidence. Spreading propaganda is the counter-revolution. Uh, espionage is the counter-revolution. Tudor is simply his personality. Banishment is the course of events. And the parish, pr parish priest, of course, is his personality. Um, accusation, of course. So we've gotten all the questions here. If we sentence him to death, I believe we get some respect from the common folk. If we let him go, the family loves us. I hate to tell you guys, though, we need to get that common folk respect up. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure this guy gets a death sentence. <laughs> State your personal information or there will be consequences. Claude Pochard, Monsieur le Judge. I've actually decided, you know, we're not really playing the honest judge. What we're playing is the survivor judge. We want to not only survive, but we want to make it out looking really upstanding, looking really justified in what we do, but still ultimately looking out for our own best interests. You stand accused of spying for the counter-revolutionaries and criticizing the existing order. Do you admit to these crimes? I am innocent. The, ac the accusation is exaggerated and comes from the ill will of the accusers, suggesting the revolutionary government is acting in ill will. Typical of a priest. Indeed. Why did the accused stay in France despite being banished? I had to take care of my sick mother. Without me, she surely would have died. Why did you not take her with you? Good. Make the filth squirm. I was in no position to afford that. I am just a poor parish priest who was unable to even carry out his duties. I have to teach every single day to survive. Is that why you started spying? For money? No. What information could I glean that would be useful to emigre? That of the supposed persecution of priests. The main argument that Archbishop de Bretel and Pius XI are using to convince Catholic monarchs to strike against the revolution. Sixth, what's wrong with me? Uh, I do not correspond with emigre, and I certainly do not write about the suffering of our clergymen. I'd like to remind you that we have evidence. Away with the liar. All right. What information did the accused manage to convey Archbishop de Bretel? Now, of course, he's saying he has no connection with the Archbishop, but he got a letter from the Archbishop. Behead the traitor. It's a simple letter, not instructions, and it's not from the Archbishop, but from my parish priest in Compan, Jean Arsene Serreto. Where is he now? I know only that he planned to leave for Switzerland. He may have changed his mind. That is why I never thought to respond to the letter. 
What a coincidence. Archbishop de Bretel currently resides in Switzerland. It is indeed a coincidence. Many clergymen reside in Switzerland. Who believes that? Yeah, I think we can go ahead and just go ahead and close this one up. And again, purely, I'm doing this purely for my own reasons. I want him to get beheaded. Um, it's pretty brutal, but we are going to give him the death penalty. Fortunately, look at that. No, we lose way too much respect with the with the counter-revolutionaries. No, no, no. You know what? We might have to keep on questioning him. Apparently, the revolutionaries, not the counter-revolutionaries, pardon me, the revolutionaries really don't want him to get killed. They just want him to get prison. So we're going to keep on asking some questions. What stipend does the accused receive as a teacher? Two francs a week, but most people give me food instead. Bread, butter, sometimes wine. Does it not bother you that poor people have to take food from their children to give it to you? Of course it bothers me, but I too have to eat. He keeps gold under his bed and still takes food from the poor. We demand an explanation. Where does the gold come from? It is not from your fellow conspirators abroad? Of course not. It belongs to the parish in Compain, which is currently under my care. The gold is not my property. Hmm. All right. Did the accused celebrate masses despite the ban? There are no churches where I could do that. Then what purpose do the chalice and reliquary possessed by the accused serve? Private religious practice. You are prohibited from administering sacraments. It's not a sacrament, merely prayer. The Declaration of Rights of Man and the Citizen allows me to pray. You should be familiar with the document. That is beside the point. By promoting superstitions in a progressive country, you are spreading sedition. All right, let's see here. So we could go ahead and uh, just sentence him to death right now, take our risks with the revolutionaries. Um, maybe they won't kill me, but there is a risk of being removed from office uh, just because of this, just for sentencing, sentencing him to immediate death. So I think we're going to just go ahead and sentence him to prison. No need to let him go. I'm not trying to please my family here. I'm trying to do what pushes me forward as a judge here. So there we go. That's pretty creepy, backseat gamer. I think it would probably be like a muscle spasm. Did he confess to his crime? No. Was his act counter-revolutionary in nature? Yes. Uh, where were the traitors to whom the defendant was corresponding with located? Switzerland. And how much did the defendant earn? Four francs per week. All right. I can wash my hands clean of him. Good day, sir. Sentenced citizen Claude Pochard to prison. Lead the condemned out. Now, it's actually going to upset the jury because we didn't give the death penalty as they asked. Um, that's not good, but we still made it through this one. Losing the respect of the jury is definitely not a good thing, but it's much safer than losing the respect of the actual people themselves. Whoa! One fool spewed out one word too many. The other fired a musket. They fought for freedom. Each for their own. That man. Hard to forget. He asked me if I'd seen his wife. He found his son. The freedom we borrowed from the wealthy and the noble. We believed it was worth the price. He was judged by people long devoid of their freedom. The only things they knew were dust and sweat and anger. That's pretty depressing. All right made a nice profit. There was a chance of prosperity. Why should the Renard family want to take over your shop, Grandpapa? For profit and power, it's always the same, and it's no different in these times. 
Today is all about equality, so that not only the aristocrats can live in dignity. Grow up, boy. I only saw the truth when you were attempted to sentence my son, your uncle, to death. It suddenly dawned on me that the only things that matter were the power I never had and the connections I never cared for. You wanted to be righteous while the injustice spread like a plague. You should not be sorry for that. What I'm going to try to do here is actually try to gain respect with the revolutionaries, I believe. So to do that, I need to gain respect with my oldest son. Um, right now, the influence on the people is from my uh, grandfather, of course, uh, or I, th I think he's my father-in-law. So I'm going to go ahead and... Ooh, I guess we have to go Burrow and the Riot. We can't change this uh, this story event, unfortunately. You signed off on the use of deadly force against the protesters, and of course, because of that, yeah, I still lost some respect to the people, but I went with the, the honest choice. So let's hope it doesn't come to bite us in the end. Now, this is the creepy thing. I might have to sentence to death the guy I gave the order to. I'm just going to check the verdicts. If we give him the death penalty, we're going to end up having to give this guy the death penalty. This is so evil. Um, but pretty much, I gave him the order to open fire. He's accused of causing the death of 34 people. Now, I can still have the moral high ground here, and here's how. I can say that I didn't expect him to open fire on that many people. 34 people, come on. They took part in the demonstration. Uh, two spontaneous groups of protesters stumbled upon each other in the streets leading to Place Vendôme. A quarrel broke out between the supporters and opponents of Citizen Capet, with both sides engaged in a heated argument. None of the involved parties managed to gain the upper hand, and they quickly resorted to name-calling. All right. Soon after, a National Guard detachment led by the defendant arrived at the scene. According to the eyewitness testimony of Blaise Fossage, Commander-in-Chief Matthew Burrell stood himself between the two groups alone and attempted to talk sense into them. He was quickly shouted down by the protesters. A few of them vocally accused the Commander-in-Chief of violating their freedom of speech. Man, this guy's as good as dead. Okay. Causing death is the accusation. We could actually try to even defend him. Um, tribunal's opinion. Hmm extenuating circumstance i don't even want to go to that right now the injured soldier would be the course of events i guess extenuating circumstances uh order to load muskets course of events once again freedom of speech would be the accusation and this is where we can probably get him the crowd's fervor would be the extenuating circumstances commander-in-chief's recklessness would be the accusation uh, and protesters, course of events, no, well that was a trap, alright, Commander-in-Chief's dismissal, his personality, I guess not, alright, no, we messed that one up, let's just hope we can convict him of death, um, here we go, so Mathieu Barrel, is the condemned aware of the severity of the charges, you understand that 34 citizens were killed, those that were killed were aggressors who dared to attack a soldier. All 34 of them? No, he was hit by a rock thrown by a single person. But before that, another rock flew over my head. I had reason to believe the mob would become violent. That's exactly where you were sent there, to prevent violence. Hey, Red Star, how you doing, bud? This is We the Revolution, is the name of the game. And I did. Several people died. But the rest of the citizens are safe. This commander-in-chief is a real piece of work. He's not a commander-in-chief anymore. Still a bastard, though. All right, let's summon the witness. All right. Blaise Fosse, Monsieur le Judge, I'm a simple blacksmith. Do you confirm that a witness of the events that cause our gathering today? Yes, I was a witness. I mean, I was there. I saw everything, and I really want to talk, and I want to talk about it. I really do. Please tell us exactly how the accused saw it. Yes, of course. That's why I'm here. I saw it. The captain. He's a captain, right? It's obvious he probably wasn't there. Go on. He stood between the people and started yelling at them. If someone came up to him, he pushed them away and made threats, shaking his fist. But I think he meant well. Why do you think that? I don't know. Just a feeling I had. Okay, we can pretty much end that one right now. Thank you, sir. I'm very sorry, but uh, that captain's going to have to go, my friends. Um, we've got the respect of the jury. We've got the respect of the common folk for giving him the death penalty. And we can wipe our hands clean of this one. Now, we've totally influenced this case. But at least you guys get to see a head drop. And at least I get to survive another day as judge. No more questions necessary. We'd probably end up finding him innocent uh, if we asked too many. So, he shall be killed. Did he confess to his crimes? No. Oh, yes, he did. Uh, what was the reason for the commander's re resignation? 
incompetence. Is the defender a monarchist? He did not make a specific request. All right, let's go ahead, give the judge's signature. And yes, we just killed our first man. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do to be a judge. And there we go. He says, the crowd loves blood. Absolutely. I hereby sentence Matthew Burrell to death by guillotine. The souls of the victims may now rest in peace. Let him share the fate of those he shot. All right. So we do lose a little bit of respect with the revolutionaries. They must have noticed that that wasn't exactly the most honest trial. Uh, but hopefully we can regain it and not get killed. Off with your head. little Stalin likes his uh, backseat gamer. Yeah, we're going for this Stalin-esque type judge, I guess you could say. All right, so maybe I could win the heart of the crowd. Um, this is, you know, a chance to sort of increase my respect. But if I don't say the right thing, then, um, you know, I actually lose their respect. So let's go ahead. Let's try. I'm going to speak to the common folk. Um, so characters, attitudes, etc. We can actually reveal their attitude, which we're going to do right now. He's attached and withdrawn. So let's see. The crime was carelessness. The defendant, we're going to be aggressive against him. And for the revolution, humility. Looks like we got one of those correct, two of those incorrectly. A weak argument, a strong argument. The first argument is strong, the next two are weak. Let's, try, let's do our best. Okay, so carelessness. The convict was curious about the taste of his crime. Now we shall give him his dessert. All right, um, next we want to talk about... Yeah, aggression wasn't a good argument, so what about manipulation? Do not listen to them when they say you cannot read. Listen to them when they beg for mercy at the guillotine. Ooh, no, they're irritated. We're going to have to try and maybe do some... Discuss some carelessness. Chop, chop, no time to waste. Oh, we really lost the respect of the crowd. Yeah, they didn't like that one bit, and we, it actually affected our reputation. We were pretty crude and disgusting, but chop off his head. Your scapegoat will die so that you can walk free. I wonder if your conscience will let you sleep at night. Ask my subscribers. Yeah, I think so. I can sleep just fine. Here we go, guys. Let him have it. Sorry. I'm usually the nice guy, but this time I'm being the evil judge. Okay, he's ours. There can be no more demeaning experience for revolutionary Paris than the escape of Citizen Capet. He escaped, slipped right from their hands, and the revolution now seems feeble and weak. The people resemble a child that could easily be duped by anyone. However, the Republic quickly composed itself, thanks to a postmaster and his people, who were able to catch the fugitives escaping the Momedy. Ordinary citizens led to the fall of a monarch. You'll have a chance to serve the Republic as well, for Citizen Capet will face the tribunal tomorrow. You will choose how we will be remembered, as a traitor, as a coward, or as an unlucky statesman. If it were for the prison guards to decide, there would only be one outcome. We can leave him alone, um, or we can let the guards rough him up in prison. I want to leave him alone until the trial. Um, I'm just hoping that this doesn't, you know, make the guards pissed off at us. So, let's take a look here. Paragraphs and codes. Never tried this one. Musical interest, he needs to learn some more perspective skills, and law can be an art in its own right. Okay, let's try this. Actually, we lost some respect with him. And with our wife, too. My goodness. All right, guys. Day six is going to be, of course, the trial of the king himself. Um, yeah, I think you're right, Red Star. But the, the thing you don't know is that I gave him the authorization to fire. Um, he asked for authorization to fire on protesters if they got violent, and I gave him that authorization. So I'm partly to blame, but I think I can defend myself in the sense that, you know, sure, I gave him authorization to fire, but maybe he overstepped his boundaries. He went a little too far. Um, that being said, um, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We've got a, quite a few viewers here, um, for at least for our live streams. Um, so what I'm going to do is this. We called this episode... Uh, being a judge during the French Revolution. So when we next come back to this game, um, I will call the episode something like um, The Trial of the King of France during the French Revolution, something like this, so that you guys can keep following it. Uh, but I do hope to catch you guys on another live stream. Again, please make sure to hit that like button. 
uh, join us, become a member for five bucks uh, or five euro, whichever one, <laughs> um, a month. It's less than five cups of coffee a month. It's really cheap. And, of course, you get a cool little Agrippa sticker, and we can even post videos early to you guys. Uh, thank you so much, though, for watching. I hope you had a lot of fun, and I'll catch you on the next one. I think, though, that maybe uh, Louis' head is looking a little wobbly right now.